Good evening and welcome this evening to the Board of Selectmen meeting for Monday, June 10th, 2024. I am opening the meeting at 6.05 p.m. All who wish and are able, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. The next on the agenda would be to approve the warrants. And just before we do, I would like to make one observation that two meetings ago, we were notified verbally from the uh, chairman of the Council on Aging that the coordinator was going to be on a leave of absence from May 31st until August 31st. And also printed in the Herald, which is their monthly newspaper, they discussed it at their own town meeting for the activities coordinator, Melanie Silva, for a leave of absence for this summer. Melanie would like to continue with her Zumba and fitness classes here in OCAM, but she could use the time off to recharge her energies for the fall. I understood by saying that she is on a leave of absence, which means that she is not working for the summer for the town of Oakham. But when the sheets came out for hours and wages, I noticed that she was put in for wages for June 3rd, June 4th, and June 5th, even though that was a part of her time away from the town. And I wanted just to make sure we take note of that. That may be an issue that we as a board are going to have to think about and discuss in the near future for future timesheets. I just felt that if she is not working for the town during that time, she would not normally be getting a wage. There's going to be a leave of absence. We need something in writing. And we have nothing. We have received nothing in writing for a leave of absence. And is it a regular leave of absence or a medical leave of absence? We need to distinguish. It just said personal leave of absence. We need to distinguish that. Is there a certain criteria we have to follow if it's the medical? So we should be sending her an FMLA? If it's a medical. Well, she'd have to request it first. She should. That's what I'm getting at. We don't know which. Yeah, we can't give it to her. She, she has to request. If that, that would be the case, we don't even know if it's the case. We don't. We do not know. So they need to inform us, maybe exactly. in writing, um, yeah. as to maybe she's decided not to take a leave of absence. We wouldn't know. Well, that's the other thing. And that's the, the other thing we do not know. You know, the payroll for the first week of June. Um, so we'll have to find out. Okay, okay, very good. We will check on that before our next meeting then and make sure that it's on our next agenda, please. Okay. Fiscal year appointments for 2020. Oh, I'm sorry. Do I hear a motion to accept the warrants? Yep. I move that we accept the warrants. Warrant number WR24-25 for tonight. Second. Oh, oh. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Okay, 2025 appointments for this year, employees and volunteers. We don't have the uh, minutes. minutes for tonight, so we'll pass over that. We don't have them. Right. So that will be passed over. Okay. Okay. Okay, accountant, Eric Kinser, CPA, one year until June 30th, 2025. Board of Registrars, Tammy Gehring, Edna Holloway, Christine Martirosian. One year till June 30th, 2025. Building Commissioner, Robert Lanciani. Historical Commission, Lucy Tesnow, Lee Dugan, William Muka, Linda Sope, and Ken Hausman. June 30th, 2025. 
Parks and Recreation, Kristen Roden, Sean Roden, Maribel LaRange, Michael O'Neill, Michael Green, Stephanie Smith. One year, six uh, till June 30th, 2025. Plumbing Gas Inspector, Michael Russ. Plumbing Gas Inspector Alternate, or be Steve Gaspar. Town Council, KP Law, one year, June 30th, 2025. Zoning Board of Appeals, Lucy Tesnow, one year. Anthony LaRange, two years, June 30th, 2026. Peter Clifford, three years, June 30th, 2027. Westbrook Schoolhouse, Ward Holloway, Ken Hausman, Linda Sopay, Tom Sopay, one year each. Open Space Committee, Lisa Huntington, Philip Warbass, Ron Wallanen, John Barringer, one year each. Laborer, truck driver, Shad Wells, one year, June 30th, 2025. Wiring inspector, Dennis Bergen, one year. Wiring inspector alternate, Tom McCaffrey, one year. Veterans agent, Holly Kolarski, one year. EMD emergency, Tom Hughes, one year. Town Hall Study Committee, Tom Sopay, Philip Warbass, Tom Hughes, Michael Brunel, Chris Schutz, one year, June 30th, 2025. Conservation Committee, Committee. Lucy Tesnow, one year till June 30th, 2025. Senior Center Activities Coordinator, Melanie Silva, one year, June 30th, 2025. Council on Aging, Rick Hendra, three years, June 30th, 2027. Barbara Ryszczynski, two years, June 30th, 2026. Claire Hendra, one year, June 30th, 2025. Cultural Council, Linda Sopay, Ken Hausman, Linda Hausman, Mary Lou Berglund, Dale Osborne, Curtis Belliner. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that would be June 30th, 2025. Treasurer Collector, Wendy Graves, one year, June 30th, 2025. Do I hear a motion to approve these people in these positions as mentioned? I move that we um, accept the appointments as read by the chair um, for the terms listed. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. One day liquor license, vendor at Pine Acres, Cameron's Winery, and the Black Room Brewing Company. We have a permit that needs to be signed and voted on. And I just want to make it clear that they're the same vendor. They just have two different names for the wine portion and then the beer portion. And the, but it's one, oh, okay. one vendor. Commonwealth of Massachusetts, Town of Ocam, Cameron's Winery, and the Black Room Brewing Company, Pine Acres Family Camping Resort. Would like to be granted a one day license to serve beer and wine only on Saturday, June 15th, 2024, from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. Ready for motion? Do I have a motion, please? Yes. I move that we grant a one day liquor license slash vendor at Pine Acres, uh, Cameron's Wine, and the Backroom Brewing Company for, uh, for June 15th between the hours of 1 p.m. and 3 p.m. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <clears throat> Do all three need to sign? Because you can all sign the application and then the permit. That would be great. Both of them? Yes. I'm going to put the date on here. You may. 10th, right? Correct. It is June 10th today, <laughs> not the 13th. Not the 13th. <laughs> I'm teasing. <laughs> Thank you so much.
Next item is the Charter Spectrum Agreement. Amend the agreement and hopefully take a vote. So if I may, quick, Lucy, they had called in regards to two addresses, right? And they were looking to see if the board wanted to amend them if they couldn't get services to those two locations, which were 288 and 300 Stone Road. And therefore, that's why you, now you guys can discuss them. And that's why we're here today. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm pleased to recognize that Bernice Stone is here from Stone Road to tell us about the houses up on the hill of Stone Road. No, I talked to a Jenny and we both would like the continuation of the charter or spectrum to our houses. Uh, Jenny was going to try to make it tonight too, but I do have a plan that shows the electric wires if anyone wants to see it, but we would like it to go to Stone Road. Okay. So I'll make a motion that we instruct Charter Spectrum to continue with the contract as written and notify them that we've been in contact with the residents of Stone Road and that they are under the full expectation that the contract be completed as initially written with no amendments. With no amendments. Well, that's fine. If they got extra money and they want to do the others, that's fine. <laughs> um, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So that's voted. Up, Bernice. Thank you so much for coming in. You're welcome. Is there anything we need to sign now? We haven't done that. I don't think they sent us any no. amendment paperwork. So Nothing the, yet. the original contract would stay in force. I just would have, just to have to notify them. Contact them. And I don't know exactly what they would need from the homeowners of the two addresses. Uh, if they need to contact them to proceed with. Yeah. With the agreement, you know. Oh, I have your contact information that you gave me. So I'll give that to Maribel so that she can, if, she, you know, Spectrum Charter needs to talk to you, but I don't know why they would. You just planned it all? I don't think so at the moment, but if we do, I know where to get it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but we should be set. Okay. Yep. Sounds good. ARPA, fund update and request. As of tonight, we have total expenditures of $292,126.89. Allocations coming up that have been discussed, Board of Health, Cable Internet Final Payment, Green Hollow Cemetery Arch for $21,774, MMA Meeting for Boston, $1,415.96, Motorola Server, $1,076.28, Dumpster and Shred It, $2,000, Harper's Payroll Time and Attendance, $4,000, Pine Grove Cemetery tree removal, $32,400. I'd like to make a note that that was just finished being accomplished last Friday, and the cemetery looks very good. We're very pleased with the company that took down those 17 trees. Might have been a little more than 17 trees if a couple got in their way. They had to take them down. Pine Grove Cemetery for the police detail while they were working alongside of Old Turnpike Road, $1,344. Library roof repairs and cleaning, $6,500. Police payroll for July, September supplemental, $6,000. Fire station lights, $1,800. Actuarial study, $2,200. Flags and bunting for Memorial Weekend, $400. For allocations of $180,000. 
$311.54. Not allocated as yet, but having been discussed, town hall painting, we were thinking and estimating ourselves that it would be somewhere around $20,000. And total pending project cost then would be the $20,000. Balance available right now is $112,521.57. I would like to comment on that part that the allocation for the painting of the town hall. We have completed, it just arrived this morning, three quotes. So we do satisfy the procurement law. And we have three quotes, one from EJ Paintings, and they're from Holden. Another one from Pennington Painting, Inc., and they're from Ware. And one from uh, John Leacock. And he is from Palmer, Massachusetts. Should I read the amounts for the record? Sure. Uh, the, the amounts that they're asking for, for EJ Penting is $59,400 to do the entire town hall. And that includes scraping and a little bit of power washing and uh, probably 40 gallons of paint. That's what I was told it would be about to do this and to fix some of the body trim for the town hall. The same goes out to Pennington, and they wanted $51,100 to do the entire town hall plus the escape out there. And Mr. Leacock has issued $35,865. What would the board like to do about that? We have estimated at the very, very beginning that it was going to be probably somewhere around 35. We were not anticipating doing every inch of the town hall, but when you give out estimates, they have to give it for the town hall itself. And all of these came through. I think they're pretty reasonable. But since we asked for only 20,000 at the beginning, there was estimated the highest or the lowest of the prices right now is 35,800. We wouldn't need to look at that amount to approve from ARPA. And once that's done, if we agree to do it, I'll do the contract and get it sent out so we can get him enrolled in doing this, hopefully by the end of the summer. If not, we we'll have to wait till next year. We're a little late in getting into the season if we decide not to go that route, then the town hall will stand as is. To clarify, two of these bids are over 50,000. Two of them are over. Which requires the full bid. According to town accountant, it does not. Over 50, it does. But because we have one under. Mm -hmm. Yes. It won't. It won't. Okay. Mm -hmm. As long as the board is okay with Accepting, accepting that, that one yeah. exactly, and some of the differences between those other two companies and Mr. Leacock is they have employees, and Mr. Prevailing Leacock. wage mm -hmm. makes a big difference. Mr. Leacock does it all on his own, and therefore he does not have to do the prevailing wage, mm -hmm. and, but mm -hmm. the other two so, do, mm -hmm. or will have to. And one of them, the price will go up because. The estimate he gave us is not including prevailing wage. Mm -hmm. That's the fifty-one thousand. No, that's the fifty. Well, that's the fifty-nine thousand actually. That's we both. The one for fifty-one thousand didn't explain whether it was prevailing wage or not. Right. So that's the one where he, if he has employees, he would have to go up. He would have to go up right. also. And yes. the first one here for the fifty-nine is. That is not the, prevailing wage. That's he, the he owner operator. It, he states it right in here. Right. Okay he would have to pay his employees prevailing wage, even though he wouldn't have to make it. So I guess our question is, is how high do we want to go to have the town hall painted? Well, 
we're years away from doing anything else with it. We are. It's not going to get any better. No, and the prices aren't worse. going to come down. So water's coming in. Yeah. On a lot of the trim. So that's not a good thing. Right. We have looked at a lot of the places that do need to be fixed outside and around. They have all agreed that they are able to fix them. Mm -hmm. The one item that we have to be careful with is in this corner where the comes down from the, sh the eaves yep. coming down. They made it very straight as they put up around the uh, perimeter and we need it to come out and down and around. So we're going to have to do something with that piping first. Okay. But we can we can call the company in to fix that. Yeah. And then I don't think they'll have a problem with that. Yeah. It doesn't take very long to do it. But that's the only thing I know that right now that we have to think about fixing before they get to that point in painting. Is that from the gutters? The gutters? The gutters. The gutters. So, yeah. yeah. A Eagle. A right. Eagle. Yeah. yeah, it was A Eagle. So. I feel if the town hall goes another winter or two without being painted or at least being primed, we can be starting to be in a lot of trouble. If you want to check out these estimates, we can wait and put it onto the next agenda for the next meeting. I'm okay with it. The 35,800. Yeah. Yeah. This is the one that you're. That's Mr. Leacock. Yes. Okay. He's. Right. He like the others. They're very well known for doing the older buildings and uh, taking great care and fixing them up. And any damages, they, they do repair them. Okay. I'll entertain a motion. to award painting contract to John Leacock from Palmer, Massachusetts for the stated price of $35,865 to be paid out of the opera account. A second motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Funded by ARPA. So we'll have to change some of the numbers oh, no, that we've we'll read before now to fifteen thousand dollars more. Um, and if I may, I just want to um, on the Bunton, it's four hundred dollars. Uh, it was allocated four hundred. The invoice for that already cleared, so we have probably give or take fifty dollars. I just want to ask board if I can return that or well, it came in under. Yeah, it yeah. came in mm -hmm. under. So uh, return the remaining. It was like a. $50 balance or something, give or take. And um, as well as the fire station lights, that was 1800 that was allocated in the invoice list for 1550. And that just got paid this warrant. So can I return the remaining? Yeah, I would. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. okay. So I'll do return those two and then add um, the 35,865. Okay. Okay. Yep. The next to be put down in the agenda was um, bylaw review. <clears throat> and the only thing, and the only reason that that's put in there today, because at the annual town meeting, there were two bylaw possible revisions that were mentioned, but they were passed over. So we need to take another look at those perhaps for the special town meeting in the fall. So we wanna keep that in mind. Any questions on that? Any comments? You know, I, I read through the, the bylaws, you know, on that subject matter and um, so we'll see what happens between now and town meeting if um, the personnel bylaw and everything that looks pretty straightforward to me, but uh, I'd have to see what 
Mass General Law that we were going to go to at town meeting, how okay. encompassed that is before I'm willing to make a decision on whether to put that before the town, you know, and what it constitutes. Okay. And my feelings with the finance committee are it's fine the way it is, um, other than getting people in town to step up. Yes. That's the whole reason I was put in. Right. Yes. Because we do have a hard time getting yeah, right. people to go into, into it, the finance committee and still we have to add gives, it. It gives you a very small window of people yeah. that would qualify. Um, as if they're on a committee that's um, talking about money, yeah, they may not be getting, uh, but they got a dog in the hunt. Mm -hmm. You know, if the committee is about, you know, this project or that project mm -hmm. or whatever. So I'm not sure it passes muster to, to do that. Maybe we'll get lucky. Maybe we'll just need more people to. We'll get three people to step forward here in the next couple hopefully, of weeks. Hopefully, we would. Yes. <clears throat> okay. And then uh, the next part FY24 Community Compact Municipal Fiber Grant. I did have a chance to read it. I forgot here. What's yours? Do you need me to make you a copy? No, I have it at home. So, is this part to it? Is this part to it? Is this part to it? And then there's the actual contract. Do you have a copy of the contract? Yes, you do. Yeah, I have a list of this is the contract. Yeah. yeah. The others are papers of explanation as to what it is, what it does, where it's going to go, how it's going to be fed into all the different town buildings that it plans to go to. And it is funded by um, local funds for a match of 4,000 something dollars. But it's going to go to the police station, the municipal hardware, and then to the school and then to the library and then to the town hall so that they will all be interconnected. The grant was awarded for $170,000. And a certain amount of that work is going to be not funded and that we would have to fund ourselves. We would have to fund anything over 172 or 75. Yes. yes. Oh, do you have any information on the school already being recently wired? They just. My understanding is they just did all five elementary schools about three weeks ago or so. They did. Um, we could probably skip the school because they already have it. So, so that would drop the. Yeah, that's away. a single source thing for the school for what they're doing with the elementary schools. And it's a single source for us still because it's right. going to the PD. Right. So, I guess the only question was, are we running two sets of fiber optic from down here? From what I understood, yes. Okay. Yeah, there were two separate lines. Right. But if the school is wired, unless we want it on the town network, then we would have to go to the school. We'd have to go to the school. Yeah. But if we don't have to, then we've got more money than we need. Right. Okay. And that would just return to the grantee. Grantee. If mm -hmm. there's anything left. Yeah. Okay. This and is the worksheet. We put in for more than what they estimated originally. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. So this whatever is extra goes back. The worksheet that was made out by them yep. for the different companies that are working, which were the Phoenix mm -hmm. and the CM Geeks will be doing their portion of it. When it's totaled, it's 83309 Take away the 4169 that we're going to have to match with. So we only end up, it seems like, $79,222 right. out of the 170. Put in for the 170 in the event we need to add a poll of right here and there. And the state was fine with that as a contingency. 
Okay. So we could have money left over. Yeah, I guess that's kind of what I was getting at. Yeah. If. And if who is going to oversee the project? Is there going to be a clerk of the works? Carol, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> probably, what are you do? probably should be. Yeah. There's going to have to be some oversight somewhere. And I didn't see it mentioned in any of these. I know CM Geeks can handle their part to yeah, it, but I don't know about the rest of it. Yeah. And of course, if there are any details, we pay the details. That and there will be details. And there will be details. My question, I, do you know what the intended length of time to complete this project is going to be? Right in there. December 31st, 2025. That's when it has to be done by. How long does it actually take them to do it once they get started? I thought they said 90 days they could. Three months? Yeah. Three months. Do we have enough officers on hand for details oh, yeah. to cover for three months? Yeah. And enough money to pay them? Well. <laughs> you hit some of their budget money. When we were doing the, the annual budget, so. I, that was the one thing I, I, other than who's overseeing it, it, do we have enough money to handle the details? So, well, once they're without off, draining the police department, once they're off the road, um, yeah, they wouldn't. So they when you're in the them. buildings and stuff, you don't need yeah. them. Yeah. Um, but replacing, if they, I would assume, well, I don't know, because they already went to the school and they didn't replace any poles no. that I know of going up Colebrook Road or Barry Road. No. So maybe the poles are all sufficient for what they want to do. So if there's no pole replacement, that's a huge savings. Yeah. So that's really the only thing we, we're not sure of is whether they're going to run a dual cable into the school, a separate cable. And from what I understand by reading all of this information, there's no digging necessary. Because if there is any digging necessary, then the town pays for that also. That does not come out of the grant. No, we should have the construction documents <laughs> for the municipal building and the rehab of the remodel of the police fire station to the police station. That all went underground from the one pole out behind the, uh, the V plow there. So everything is underground from there. So it would have to pass through the building once it came in to the next building. Mm -hmm. That should be fairly straightforward, I would think. Yeah. Okay. Not for me, but for whoever's doing it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do we want to continue looking at this, putting it again on the next agenda? Do you want to make a decision this evening? I'll entertain a motion. If you want to wait, that we decide to do that. That's all right, too. I don't have the thing they grant. Do you have an issue with it? No. My, that was my only issue was if we had too much money, how we were going to send it back. Oh, they'll, believe me, <laughs> I'm sure they have a way. They know how to do that. No, my own. My Without them going, what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> I don't want this. I just, you know, my concern was who's going to oversee the project because yeah. we're not always around to oversee everything. Right. Well, what would be the timeline to find some to find somebody to oversee it yeah. as, a, as a clerk for the works? Okay, I'll entertain a motion. Oh, one question: If you yeah. guys are going to accept this, because the former selectman led this initial mm -hmm. process, everything was under his name. Since then, it's been changed, and they put it to my name. Yeah, so. If somebody else wants to sign this, 
Well, it looks like we just found the clerk of the parks. <laughs> <laughs> no. I just want to make that clear. Only because of that, the circumstances. You, you know, if you really look at your job description, <laughs> it says that you have to oversee specific special projects. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> <laughs> Good luck with that one. <laughs> After vacation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. After um, you take a very nice long rest. <laughs> if you go to the Grand Canyon, you can't you can't get too close to the edge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> True. Long way down. <laughs> so we just need to reauthorize also that you are the yes. signatory. Yes. Yep. On this. So we include that in your motion, please. Make a motion we accept the grant from the state <clears throat> to the fiber uh, project mm -hmm. and authorize Arvell Arrange to be the signatory for all grant paperwork. That it? That's it. I second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Go past. Administrative assistant report. Um, I don't have a whole lot. I actually, the only update that I, I can uh, report on today is the HR services or the um, discussion on HR services with Rutland. Again, former selectman Langlois kind of led this project or this uh, discussion and trying to take over. I know that there was a dollar amount of $9,195 uh, for up to five hours a week for HR services. After discussing with the TA in Rutland, it's five hours allocated every single week. So it wouldn't be on a as need yes, basis. It would be consistent. <clears throat> I think that, that that would be something that the board would have to have further discussion exactly on the needs and wants for the town. I don't know if he was super clear on what was needed. I know I will, I'm not because it's just trying to put the pieces together from where one person left off. And so, I mean, I think that it would possibly be a good idea if you guys wanna keep looking into this to have a discussion with Austin or myself and how to proceed, but and he said, based on the needs, he wasn't super sure exactly what the needs, the price can change. Therefore, it can go be more if it's, it's, if it's needed, but they just probably, it's challenging to do it as a on need basis because they would need to designate, you know, specific time hours a week to make it work for their right. employee, which makes sense. Not just pick up the phone and say, hey, can you come here tomorrow and help us out? I would suggest not five hours a week, maybe five hours a month. Yeah, and that might be too much too. You know, <laughs> well, I mean, we don't seem well, to have a lot of discipline I, problems. And we would, would need to job. look at it and, and come up with something that we know we need to have done. If we have I don't enough. want to leave it open-ended. Right. I don't want to be a lot specific. Yes. There is an alternative to this. <clears throat> the MMA has a course coming up in the end of the year, September. It certifies local people as HR people. It's $875. And I would suggest, seeing that she's handling all the HR stuff, that she be certified in it. We have our own person. So. Maribel is always already the uh, yeah, she's harassment a, coordinator. She does all. She does it all. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, that would kind of fall into the HR category anyways. Yeah. Right. I mean, since yeah. I've been here, we haven't had a whole lot. We did do one FMLA yep. right when I started. Yeah. Thank goodness for, you know, just reaching out to the Department of Local uh, of Revenue and they guided me through the whole process and getting the paperwork and Whatnot, but beyond yeah. that, the, the rules and regulations, the policies and procedures yes. that have all been 
put into effect. Somebody has got to oversee that. And she's already doing it. So why don't we get her certified from the state? Is that on Zoom or is it in person? I, I'll i look. I can't sure. remember. Sometimes they split them. Uh, that's what I'm wondering. I, I'm, yeah. I'm there getting was one that class that I wanted to take, but they pushed it off to next year, um, which was going to be us, you know, half in person, right. half Zoom, and it was going to be every Friday. So I definitely want to look into that for next year. Um, I think it would be super beneficial. But this one, I don't know. I want to say Zoom, maybe. I, I want to say this one is all Zoom. Yeah. <clears throat> I just thought for that amount of money that they would do some part of it in person. Well, the one that I was looking at was like 2800 and that one was 50-50. Not that the town was going to pay for that. I'm just saying I would invest in my own education if need be. Well, the other side of it, too, is when the opera money's gone, then it'll be gone. We would have to come out of general revenue that we may not have in the future. You may end up having to cut it anyways, or be bound by it till the contract's up. But I like that idea better. I do. Yeah. I think that's workable. Yeah. Either that or I would go with only five days a month. But since we have a person here who would be willing to do it, I'd rather stay. In town. I would like to keep it in town as much as we can. Absolutely. <clears throat> and the 875 can come out of Opera. Mm -hmm. While we have it. While we have it. Yes, indeed. Yeah, unless there's um, education line item in the budget. This is above whatever is budgeted because we cut that. Okay. So I would just charge it up to Opera. That would. <clears throat> do we want to make motion on that tonight or hold off on that a little longer up to you guys i mean when when is it when is this course going to start oh, i'll have to look it up i think it's in well, let's do it at, let's do it at the next meeting and that way she can have the information yeah, she can grab all the other okay it'll be fine we'll, yeah, we'll know what so if you would please put that on the next agenda. Well, she won't be here for the next meeting. Right? I will. Oh. She will be. I won't be. No, I will not be either. On the twenty oh. fourth. So that's another thing. So we let's do it and. You and everybody's back from vacation yeah. in July. You return on back on. I will be here that Monday on the 24th. Unfortunately, I will not be here until probably nine o'clock at night. <laughs> if you want to open at nine o'clock at night, I will be happy to join you. <laughs> or would the board like to schedule their meeting for Tuesday? But Tuesday the would be fine with me if you didn't have anything else to do it's, that Tuesday night. It's good for me. Yeah, we Tuesday can put it off Lucy a day. Will be here. Yeah, Maribel won't. At least so. one of us will be here. Okay. I will not be here for the next two meetings. You'll be back on the 10th. Yes, yeah, so I'll Halloween. miss, but I'll leave everything ready for the, the next meeting. So you guys will be squared away. Just meeting after that. A very short meeting. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to post our agendas. I can do yeah. that ourselves. Well, you could do the agendas actually now. I can do the agenda if you make it super... But if anything needs to be changed, we can always put it in and under new business. I know how to do that. See, <laughs> Don can do it. <laughs> so I can, much, give, I, I can give him the uh, blank agenda and you can fill it in with the basics. We can touch base on that okay. next week, but I'll have the agenda for the next meeting all set for you guys to go. Sounds good. And so it'll be like a plan. Tuesday the 25th instead of Monday the 24th. Right. Very good. Thank you. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, new business. Do we have any new business that anyone would like to bring up to the board?
I just have um, one question asked of me that uh, the board of registrars that worked at the recount, do they get paid? Okay. Where do we get the money from? From the account. So that's they account. had an account, but that's gone because it's a stipend. Do a line item transfer from any other money they have. Okay, and how much per hour? What do they normally get? They just get a stipend. Well, there's only a line item for the registrars, which normally they've never had to really work. They've never used so, it. No. And it's only $300, so it's $150, $150. So it could just depend. What are the poll workers make? The poll workers, the last time I was a poll worker, which is a few years ago, was $12 an hour. It's minimum wage, whatever that is. The what? I think it's minimum wage is what I thought they Minimum wage right minimum now is what, 15? No. Fifteen seventy five, and that was for three hours mm. of work at that yeah. night. Well, that is, they were here from three, from three until six, three six. for sure. Yeah. Actually, seven. Actually, it was closer to seven because yeah. I was just finishing up with my second meeting and coming mm -hmm. back in, and they were still yeah, very really closer. Closing up, but they were pretty well done. So I would say four hours. So my question is, does Miss Holloway get paid as well? She collected the stipend or is she just the other two registrars? Uh, well, Edna took the stipend from the registrars to the, begin with. Yeah, she took the second half yeah. of the stipend. So the 115 was just cash paid out. The 150. So I would say the other just two. The other two. So you're saying Edna was already compensated for well, the she just, for the interim time period. Yeah, and she took the remaining of the stipend, which it's which processed right in this warrant for the 150. So the second half of the stipend went till June 30th. Well, yeah, yeah. Wouldn't be. How would you divide that out? She was the effect of May thirty first, and we reappointed them for her mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. So she probably should be paid again, again. You know. Yeah. So pay all three of them four hours. In the counters, Lucy. Mm -mm. I was just going to ask, were they expecting to get paid? Because I wasn't expecting to get paid. And I was counting. I just figured it was a different thing that needed to be done. Well, the registrars are the three that were sitting up. Yeah, here. I, you know, I, I get it, I, but I don't know. That's why I'm just asking now. The ones that were at the tables that were designated as the counters. Yeah, I, it's I, the I, same I just, as working I, the polls. Right, but I was wondering if they even thought they were going to get paid. I, I, I did not. Don't pay me. Well, we've been asked, so okay. right. we're addressing the situation. Yes. We had two counters, one for each yeah. table. Yeah. So four, four. total. Four. Four. Two counters and two tallies. Yeah. So then if you get to that, you can the other person into all of them. Yeah. I think the rest were like volunteers. Yeah. Volunteers. Okay. We don't get paid anything. My, my thought is that you know when I when I worked at the polls, I know I'm going to get paid. I, if I would have asked if I thought I was going to if I thought I was getting paid for that, I kind of just assumed I wasn't. So I that's why I was just kind of surprised by it. Well, now you'll have sixty dollars to take down a self for dinner. It's going to run around eighty. <laughs> No, we can think about it some more if you want to put it on the next agenda. It's just, I would, 
I would want to make sure put it on the next agenda and for the next period because now we're going into the next one. It will be a split True. warrant, so it kind of has to be so decided for the next the now. July fifteenth is a split warrant, right. and we so have to have the work done by then. Is we had two runners that were in a in an official capacity. Are they going to fall under the same thing as the? I personally, if I had, it would be the registrars if if I, that's just my the way i viewed it because they're a board under these circumstances but i don't know the, they're employees that were working for the town and they yeah. were sworn into that position because uh, everybody else was approached and asked more on a volunteer right. basis is how i interpret it but by all means i, I don't the, know the way you interpret it i just hope i interpret i don't know everyone else i want to speak for everyone else yeah it just when you start adding up, it ends up there was a lot of people working on that because you had um, there's another lady that was Italian in the corner, right? Yep. She there was, was two working, here, two runners, four on each two table, runners, four on each table. Four. So that's four counters, that's seven right there. It's, it's more than a regular election by the time you're done with how many. You've got like ten people at right. least. <laughs> they were not sworn in as employees. Yeah. Exactly. No. no. The registrars were so sworn in as employees. As employees, they need to be paid. Yeah. Well, that's yes. That's why I saw it like that. Yeah. 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 Okay. So three registrars for four hours at what rate? Minimum wage? Fifteen. Yeah. Okay. True. That way at least I'll have an answer for the person that asked. Any other discussion on that before we go on to the next line? No. Nope. Okay, very good. Um, old business. The only thing I have for old business is that we had talked about at last meeting draining the septic yep. bolts. And so they are coming on Thursday. Um, and son, um, and son, I will get it, yes. <laughs> um, they are coming on Thursday. While they are there, they said they would talk to us about being put on a schedule for an annual whatever. I talked to the highway superintendent, and he felt once every three years was sufficient for the, them up at the municipal building. At the town hall, I still think one year, maybe two, but no more than. Because the one for the town hall gets used a lot with the church and here. And... I've heard people saying to me that, um, are we going to charge the church half the price for having this one cleaned out? Because this one will be $300. Mm -hmm. It's a 1,000 gallon tank. So if the church uses it half the time, we use it most of the time, that um, they should be responsible for their half of the deal. If you're thinking of changing the schedule at the municipal building, I would ask the people who are pumping it what it should be. They're going to have a better idea. Right. That's that's their job. That's a um, one and a half. So that's four twenty. Yeah. yeah, that's a small tank for two going fifteen hundred. Usually the average for a household. Yeah. yeah, but we got the the two gray water tanks too up there. Well, on yes. The floors. Yes. Mm -hmm. For the drains and the floors, and that was those don't go to the leach field. Those are like holding tanks, if I remember right. If they're floor drains, yeah, you can't. They can't. So go in. That was supposed to be just for you know the the trucks come in, there's snow on them, it melts. Right. Wasn't definitely wasn't supposed to be for washing trucks or whatever in right. in the building. Yeah. Um, so I don't know what the that, that's the cycle that, has been on. Pumping they could have oil and grease from the trucks. It could have right. So that would probably different. that would have to be. It has to. It is. wouldn't be Carlisle. Yeah, it would be. Uh, I don't know who it would be. I'm thinking Clean Harbors or something like something that. Something like that, yeah. yes. Just because that's what's in my head. But, right. Um, a company so, like that. Yeah. yeah. But if you're thinking of not doing the municipal septic system every year, I would ask the septic company. I'll t we'll talk to them when they come up on Thursday yeah. to see what they have in mind and, and see what we can do. 
it'll be four hundred dollars to clean theirs, three hundred to clean out this one. Yeah. And that's actually, I think that's the residential rate they use, anyways. Yeah. Um, last time I used them, used them, it was four hundred. Two years ago, so you don't want to not do this and have a problem. <laughs> nope. No, we don't. We do not need any problems at all when it comes to that. We've been through it once or twice, and that was sufficient. Any correspondence that we should know? No. Anything else that you would like to discuss? Bring up for discussion? Oh, actually, under correspondence, and I didn't print it, but we did receive one application for um, the town clerk position, someone from Barry, um, no prior experience. It is on the MMA on the website. So. Where it's advertised. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'm going to throw it on Indeed tomorrow morning just to. Put it out there. Okay. Um, I know that the assistant town clerk, you know, will stay or remain as assistant. assistant yeah. But yeah, it's difficult though because she does need a lot of training. There's so many different parts to that job that you have to yeah learn, and it's tough, you know. I mean, and I don't fault her by any means, not wanting to no, use of course not. a state computer with somebody else's credentials, which, no, you know, and that did not provide her, but she wouldn't accept even if she did. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of moving pieces in that office. Really? And well, we'll keep I did reach out to the um, town clerk association as well, seeing if they have any I see on their website, on the Town Clerk Association, they have a, a section for job employment. So I did send them an email inquiring how can we list our ad to pop up there. And if they know of any prospects or where to, yeah. you know, any information that they can provide. So just kind of waiting to hear back from that. Good. And hopefully soon we'll hear something positive. Shouldn't. Okay. Shouldn't the assistant town clerk have credentials to the state computer? They should. Mm -mm. I would think so by now, yes. It's a little reason to have an assistant. Right. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Look into that, getting her credentials. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> I am going to um, dedicate a couple hours with her Friday morning. I mean, just to see how we can, you know, she's trying to prepare the minutes for the annual town meeting and kind of maybe hopefully have them sent to the town accountant who can give them a second. I just, any information or any help that we can get from any direction. Yeah. So. Okay. It's got to be resources out there that she can reach out to. Mm -hmm. And I do apologize. I, I forgot. Well, I read right over it and didn't say it was public session. I'll entertain anybody that has anything for public session. Nobody on. I don't think so. Is, is there anybody on there? No, thanks. So. No, it would have beat. Yeah, I don't, it I don't see it. Yeah. Okay. All right. No comments for public session. Okay. Then we are ready to go into executive session. We will be going into executive session, chapter 30A, section 21-2, to conduct strategy session in preparation for negotiations with non-union personnel. Will we be opening up to public session after? Just to adjourn, then move into executive session for the second one, and right. then back into session. Okay. Following the first executive session, we will have executive session for chapter 39, section 23B, subsection 3, contract negotiations, non-union personnel. Do I mention the thing? Harold Black. 
And from there, we will reopen the public meeting and for adjournment. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Roll call vote, Don Hapikoski? Aye. Aye. Michael Fernell, Lucy Tesno, aye. We stopped us. We have completed executive session. We're now back into being open meeting. Make a motion that we adjourn. I second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 839. 839. Meeting adjourned. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Harold. This is a good evening.